What up, guys? Welcome back to Fitness Business Podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you after spending thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours researching and testing peptides myself and tracking every single result. After spending a ton of time, I've narrowed down um, some of my favorite peptides that I've experimented with and that I would recommend to anybody who's serious about health, longevity, optimization, not only for yourself, but once you really dial this in yourself, you can use these tools with your clients, right? Get them better results, faster results, differentiate yourself because now you can use tools that lower effort and sacrifice. We talk about offers all the time on here. And now you can add components to your offer that makes your ability to create results faster, right? Speed is speed is the most important thing, like faster, easier. And guys, like dieting is hard, right? Because when you diet, it signals to your body that you're in this famine mode and then your, your leptin goes out of control and you just want to eat to survive. It's literally fighting against evolution. And so there are tools now that can make dieting so much more effective. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so today I'm gonna walk you through all of them, what are my favorite ones, what they do, how they work, even how to dose them and how to stack them with other compounds for maximum effect. Plus, I'm gonna cover what are called non-peptide compounds, things like, well, growth hormone is technically a peptide, but NAD+, plus, uh, SLUPP332, and this is one of my favorite compounds ever. Now listen, if you've already watched part one, you've got the foundation, you know how important it is to get lean first, optimize your metabolism, and you know the history of peptides and what they are. If you haven't listened to part one, I would go back and check that out. It should be the episode prior to this one. But anyways, let's get into it. First one, and by far my favorite, the most incredible compound that I think that the world has, has ever created. It's the most in wild health invention or medical breakthrough since penicillin, okay, or antibiotics. Uh, it's it's insane. It's retrotutide. So for those watching on YouTube, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here so you can see some notes. And guys, by the way, if you're listening to this, in the show notes, there's a Google Doc with literally everything you need, okay? Uh, how to use peptides, how to dose, Everything I'm covering in these three-part episodes, including like where I source my peptides with discount codes and links, everything you need to get to get going. Okay, so check the show notes for that. But let's talk about Retta. Okay, Retta is a uh, is just incredible. Okay, it is a triple agonist. Okay, when you hear of things like Ozempic or GLP ones, Mangerno, right? These are GLP ones. They work simply by suppressing appetite, and then they also slow gastric in in emptying. Whereas retrotutide is a triple agonist, okay? It hits three different receptors. Number one, the GLP-1, which is like the other ones. That means it reduces appetite, slows digestion, and improves glucose control. But the GIP receptor, where it acts on uh, the GIP receptor, it enhances your insulin response and supports fat metabolism. I'm telling you guys, like when I eat, when I'm on this, uh, when I'm on Retta, it's like you're in a hard cut, like if you were like competing, where when you're really insulin sensitive because you've lost a lot of body fat and you eat and you can feel a pump because you can feel those nutrients just getting shuttled to your muscles. And anytime you're more insulin sensitive, you are going to be healthier. Okay. Uh, it's, it's incredible the way this works. Okay. And the number two thing or the three thing is the glucagon receptor. The glucagon receptor actually causes an increase in fat oxidation and energy expenditure. So like for me, when I'm eating on this, I feel my energy expenditure go up. I start to sweat. And like, it's, it's, it means you can eat more food. You can stay fuller. Like it just makes dieting like a cheat code. I'm telling you guys. So again, you're not just suppressing appetite now like Ozempic. You're enhancing your body's ability to burn fat, preserve muscle, improve metabolic efficiency. And well, think of it like this, right? Imagine like Ozempic is a hammer. Wretched two tide is like a Swiss army knife. Let me just get, I want to go further into this because I think Retta is the most powerful one of any. Okay, so number one, how does it preserve muscle loss during cuts? It, it actually, most GLP-1s can actually cause muscle loss when you're in a caloric deficit, okay, which is not good. Retrotutide preserves lean mass by maintaining nitrogen balance and reducing markers of muscle breakdown. They actually did a study where they had like men weighing about 180 pounds and in a 12 week cut, he was able to retain four to six pounds more muscle compared to the GLP-1 users only. That's huge. Okay, number two, increased mitochondrial efficiency. Retrotutide upregulates something that's called PGC-1A, which is a trigger to your mitochondrial biogenesis. Basically, you're creating more energy producing power plant inputs in your cells. In animal mod models, it actually resulted in a 20% higher ATP output per cell, which means you're gonna have more endurance, better recovery, less midday fatigue, higher training volume and tolerance. Okay, the third thing that I love is the improved insulin sensitivity. What it does is it enhances GLUT4 translocation which means your muscle cells uptake more glucose more efficiently. In fact, in studies, they show 15 to 25% improvements in insulin sensitivity markers after weeks eight to 12. 
So what does that mean for you? More energy, fewer cravings, better nutrient partitioning, and it becomes anabolic, meaning it can actually help you to grow muscle. I mean, obviously, if you're training and getting in enough protein. Okay, the fourth thing is faster recovery between sessions. It actually downregulates inflammatory markers while increasing collagen synthesis. So your average recovery window can shrink anywhere from like 72 hours to 48 hours, which means you can train more frequently without being beat up. The number five thing, it enhances endurance and VO2 max. VO2 max, which is basically your lungs, and your, not even your lungs, but your body's ability to process oxygen, okay? In early trials, it shows a 10 to 15% increase in VO2 max after just six weeks in trained individuals. This means you can train harder, more reps, higher conditioning tolerance, better fat oxidation during uh, cardio. Now, my favorite thing is the neuroprotective benefits. So retrotutide actually increases BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor, up to 25%. BDNF is basically like you're, you have high BDNF levels when you're a little kid, and then they kind of slowly decrease as you age. This is how you learn, uh, focus, better memory and motivation. And if you've ever had a cut or you've been dieting and you feel that brain fog, not only is that going to go away, you're going to be optimized. You're going to feel better. Okay, longevity and cellular health. It reduces oxidative stress markers up to 20 to 30% while maintaining telomere length and improving endothelial function. That is your heart's ability to actually pump oxygen throughout the body. So this means lower cardiovascular risk, slower biological aging, healthier skin, it's even been shown to have anti-cancer and anti-tumor proliferation properties. So that's why I say it's a miracle compound. I mean it, right? So how do I run it? I would start at either a half mig or 0.8 mig per week for a couple of weeks. See how you, you feel. You might get a little nauseous. I mean, that's a very low dose. Then you'll slowly titrate up to like one to four mil milligrams a week, depending on, you know, how you respond. I personally am going to run this continuously. I'm never going to cycle off. I might cycle off for like four weeks out of the year, six weeks out of the year, but I'm gonna check blood work, all those things. Start slow, then you could titrate up, okay? I also stack this with growth hormone that I'll talk about, Mod C and the Glow Blend, which brings us to the next one, which is my favorite compound number two, the Glow Blend. So what this is, it's a blend of BP, BPC-157, uh, TB-500, GHKU, and it also has also KPV. So this is a combination peptide that I also run almost year round. I cycle off for periods of time, but I've been on this now for about a year straight. And here's what it does, BPC, improves gut, ligament, tendon repair, incredible for healing soft tissue, okay? Injuries, inflammation, TB500 is an angiogenesis, so it actually helps you to formulate new blood vessels, faster muscle recovery, uh, better joint mobility, chronic injuries. GHKCU is a collagen remodeling peptide that improves skin elasticity, hair health, and wound healing. And when you have all these things together, it's literally like a full-time recovery team working in your body. And guys, that's how, like, I'm 36, right? And I train hard, and I do not get injured when I'm on this peptide. It's wild. I actually had an incident where I dropped a 45-pound plate on my foot and broke my toe and, like, split my toe open. And, dude, I'm telling you, I was healed in, like, six days. It's crazy. So to run this, it's pretty simple, and all of this is in the Google Doc that I mentioned. You're going to reconstitute. Um, well, first, I get this from BioLongevity Labs, this blend. You can get it from a few other sources that are in the Google Doc. I reconstitute with 2 ml of backwater, and I inject about 0.2 milliliters subcutaneously three times a week. Super simple. Some people cycle like eight weeks on, eight weeks off to, to maintain the receptor sensitivity. You know, that's a choice you can make. I probably would cycle off. I'm just kind of a, a, a psycho, right? So number three that I want to talk about is SS31. Also MOTC. I'd put those both together because they both kind of do the same thing but they both are mitochondrial optimizers, okay? And so with SS31 or MOTC, your mitochondrial are like the energy powerhouse of your cells. When they're functioning optimally, you're gonna have more energy, better recovery, slower aging. And over time, you know, stress, diet, uh, all of these environmental toxins that we're exposed to, your mitochondria starts to get damaged. Membranes start to break down and ATP output drops. So when you feel sluggish, foggy, slow to recover, that's why SS31 or MOTC repairs mitochondrial membrane function. And guys, as I'm recording this, I'm just gonna put my peptides back in the fridge because you never wanna keep them out for longer than like 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, you got it. They're very fragile. So you got to make sure you keep them uh, refrigerated. So I'm going to throw mine back in here. So with uh, MOTC or SS31, I use uh, get my MOTC dosage, but for SS31, I do two to three milligrams subcutaneously daily for about eight to 12 weeks. And again, in, in the Google doc, there's like dosage instructions for each of these things. You can, you can just look at it there. Or if like, I'm feeling run down, I feel like I'm recovering slowly and just like foggy. I'll just put in MOTC for like a six weeks, six week burst. And it just like boosts my mitochondria. The next one I want to talk about is called Epitylon. This is like the longevity and sleep reset peptide. It's the classic one that the Russian bioregulator team developed really to help with longevity and to get their soldiers to sleep more effectively in the battlefield. This increases melatonin production, so you get better sleep, activates telomerase, which is telomere lengthening. So it basically puts these like protective caps on your DNA, and as you age, these things shorten, but epitylon maintains telomere length, which is ultimately associated with longevity and uh, cellular health. It also balances neuroendocrine rhythms, 
So it basically resets your circadian rhythm and hormone production and immune function. So think about with your clients who come to you who have circadian rhythm disruption, this helps to reset it. Okay, I do this two to three times per year. That's it. Each cycle is like 10 to 20 days and it just like, boom, like two to three times a year. It's like a short burst. All right, the final one that I want to talk about are uh, growth hormone secreted hogs. There are several out there. There's testimorelin, there's CJC, I'm a Prelin, there's multiple of them. It's a GHRH analog, basically growth hormone releasing hormone. What that means is instead of like injecting actual growth hormone, which I'm a huge fan of and I think everybody should do, but like not everybody wants to use growth because there's a really negative connotation around it, but testmorelin signals your body to produce more of its own GH. So it boosts endogenous GH and IGF-1 levels. IGF-1 is basically, anytime you're building muscle, it's IGF-1. When you eat protein and it creates a uh, the anabolic spike from protein, it signals IGF-1. Growth hormone, IGF-1. All of these processes lead back to IGF-1. Testosterone signals IGF-1. So if you can just basically get your growth hormone increase and your IGF-1 levels increase, you get better visceral fat loss. Targeting belly fat specifically, which is really where most metabolic dysfunction comes from, is visceral body fat. It preserves meat, lean muscle mass improves deep sleep. GH is released during sleep. So the more GH you get, the better recovery and sleep you get and enhanced recovery capacity. So with this, I'll use it with my growth hormone, very small doses. And I pair it with uh, one to two IUs of growth. Or you can also just do like, you know, you could do two milligrams subcutaneously daily, either in the morning fasted if you're trying to lose weight, or I would do it before bed if like weight loss isn't your primary goal. Okay, so you got to kind of like decide because it has fat burning benefits. So it's like, do I want to take the fat burning benefits and do it with like fasted cardio or do I want like the, the more of the deep sleep benefits and do it before sleep? All right, let's talk about the final thing, non-peptide compounds that I use consistently because peptides are incredible, but if you can layer them with like the right hormones, molecules, you unlock just next level. The first one is TRT. Okay, I'm not gonna get into that super in depth, but testosterone replacement therapy, if you're a man and you don't have optimized testosterone levels, and if you're a female too, that's where I would start. Let's say you have your testosterone optimized, we're all good there growth hormone pairs really well with testosterone, okay? It's like, if I were gonna stay on just three things my entire life, it would be TRT, growth hormone, and retrotutide, okay? Just those three things, you'll be a superhuman. Now, as a female, it's a little bit more nuanced because if you're trying to have kids or you plan to have kids, I wouldn't start TRT. Men, there can be some downsides. I had two kids while being on T TRT for over a decade. Not gonna get into all that today. Uh, do your own research, right? But growth hormone is like the godfather of recovery and body composition. So growth hormone, a lot of people think, well, when I inject growth hormone, it's gonna shut down my natural production. That's not the way it works. And they also think, well, if I take growth hormone, like I'm gonna grow all my organs. Yeah, if you're taking eight, 10, 15, 20 IUs of growth, but I'm talking about like one to two, okay? One for females, maybe two for men. Or if you're a man, man trying to get into like a big muscle building phase, you might go up to three or four, okay? So for me, I run two IU in the morning, pre fasted cardio. And then sometimes I'll do an IU before training, or if I'm not training, I do an IU before bed. Women, I would do an IU in the morning pre cardio. Or if you're just, if you're not trying to burn fat, then I would just do a pre sleep. If sleep is more of what you're trying to optimize. Okay. Number two, NAD plus one of my favorite NAD plus is a coenzyme that powers mitochondrial and supports DNA repair. So by using NAD, you're going to boost mitochondrial and ATP production. You're going to support uh, longevity, improve focus. Focus is the big one. So I use this either before training, a small amount before training, too much, you'll feel like shit, like literally like 0.1 ml, or I'll do like 0.2 to 0.3, uh, like in the morning, or if I'm just feeling like sluggish throughout the day. And I'm telling you guys like fucking crushes. Number two is what I call, uh, not what I call, but what is called the recovery rush. So all this is an antioxidant blend. I get this from Soma Kim's, which is in the Google doc. It's an antioxidant detox synergy blend. So it has N-acetylcysteine, glutathione, glycine, taurine, and choline. So what this does, it supports CNS and liver detoxing, accelerates recovery, like especially if you're partying or something, like if you go out and like drink alcohol, boom, hit this, it'll help uh, detox your body. It helps with just liver. Your liver is so important. So if you can keep your liver healthy, everything else is gonna work better. And then the final one, my favorite, SLU PP32. We'll just call this SLU. SLU is not really a peptide because it's a short chain molecule, but it's like similar. Okay, what this is, it's a exercise mimetic, meaning it activates the same molecular pathways as aerobic activity or endurance training without actually having to do it, okay? So it's like the bio equivalent of doing zone two cardio without having to do cardio, but I would still do cardio, okay? We don't wanna replace cardio, but you would do this away from, like I, I do it in the morning pre-training or pre-fasted cardio, and it gives me double the benefits, okay? How this works is it increases AMK and PGC1A pathways the same as aerobic exercises enhances mitochondrial biogenesis and increases fat oxidation and supports glucose uptake and insulin sensitivity. They've shown research 12% reduction in body weight without actually exercising in human data and a 25% increase in fat oxidation 
with enhanced mitochondrial function. It's crazy. So the way I use this, it's an oral, which is nice. You don't have to pin yourself with this. I literally use like 300 to 500 micrograms before, either before a cardio session in the morning, or if I'm taking a walk later in the day, don't do this around training because it'll just create like too much energy output uh, that it, you just won't get a good training session, okay? You'll want it during like lower intensity activity or fasted states. All right, so now you know my top five favorite peptides and how I stack everything. I want you to know what's coming next. So in the next episode, it's important to understand knowing how to use them, but knowing how to stack them, dose them, cycle them right is the other part. So that's where part three is coming in. I'm gonna give you my starter protocol, the exact stack that I would use if I'm experimenting for the first time. I'm gonna break down my morning fasted cardio stack, my cognitive optimization stack, the hormone and recovery stack, and how I pull from my toolbox, meaning like different peptides for specific situations. Immune support if I'm sick, gut healing, if I'm getting, having gut issues, maybe sleep issues. Then I'm also gonna cover the supplements that I would use to pair with these things. And I'm gonna also walk you through how to properly reconstitute, dose, how to properly store these things, everything you need to get started. So that's it guys, hopefully you found this useful. Again, if you've made it this far, check the show notes for the Google Doc, for links, for sources, all that good stuff. And don't miss part three coming next. See you guys.